الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الحكيم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم ترى المؤمنين والمؤمنات يسعى نورهم بين أيديهم وبأيمانهم بشراكم اليوم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ذلك الفوز العظيم يوم يقول المنافقون والمنافقات للذين آمنوا انظرونا نقتبس من نوركم قيل ارجعوا وراءكم فالتمسوا نورا فضرب بينهم بسور له باب باطنه فيه الرحمة وظاهره من قبله العذاب ينادونهم ألم نكن معكم قالوا بلى ولكنكم فتنتم أنفسكم وتربصتم وارتبتم وغرتكم الأماني حتى جاء أمر الله وغركم بالله الغروب My dear elders, respected brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places in the Quran He fast forwards us and gives us an imagery of the day of judgment and in one such place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this, and it's so beautiful and it's so profound. And this is in Surah Hadid. Surah Al Hadid, the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the middle of the surah, after he talks about giving charity and the reward for giving charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala switches over and he's talking to the Prophet. And he says to him, Yawma tara meaning the Prophet ﷺ is going to be the one seeing this. Yawma tara, on the day when you will see. Yawma tara al-mu'minuna wal-mu'minat. That on the day where you will be seeing the believers, the believing men and the believing women. Yasa'aruhum bayna aydihim. They will have this light with them. They will have this amazing light with them. And what is this light, my dear brothers and sisters? He mentions two lights. And one of them is going to be coming out from the chest. And then the other one is going to be coming out from our, our right hand. And the scholars, they comment on this and they say that these lights are the light of our iman in this world. Our iman is in our heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that um, in Surah Al-Hujurat, he mentions how uh, the, 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 the Iman and Taqwa comes from the heart and he is the one that's going to be rewarding that, right? Iman and Taqwa is something that comes from the heart and the Prophet Sallallahu says that um, Taqwa ha-huna, that Taqwa is in the heart. That means that it's something that we cannot see in this world. But on the day of judgment, it is visible. It is a light. It is a bright, shining light. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentions this and he says that some people's lights will be so vast that they will be illuminating 
the path to an entire city. Just one, one person's light will light up the entire city. And this is the light of the Iman. And then when you have Iman in this world, what does it translate to, brothers and sisters? It translates to deeds. Right? Amal, Amalun Saleh. Doing good, righteous deeds. And when you do good deeds, that is the work of your hand. So the hand will also be illuminated with this light. And this is the right hand. And what, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about what, on the day of judgment? In another place in Surah Al-Haqqa, he says that we will be receiving our book of deeds, our book of deeds in our right hand if we are righteous. Right? We will receive our book of deeds in our right hand if we are righteous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about these two lights. And for these people that have these lights, glad tidings for them. There's glad tidings that they have succeeded in this world. They did what they were supposed to do in this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the glad tidings of Jannat. Not one Jannah, not one garden, but multiple gardens which they will be in forever. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah now, He says, يَوْمَ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ And it's amazing because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes two people in the Quran, usually He's talking about the believers and the non-believers. Right? He talks about the mu'min and the kafir. But in these ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focuses on two groups of people both of which claim Iman. And you will see the similarities as the ayats go on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ذُرُونَا نَقْتَبِسْ مِنْ نُورِكُمْ قِيلَ ارْجِعُوا وَرَاءَكُمْ فَالْتَبِسُوا نُورًا فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورِ اللَّهُ بَاءٍ بَاطِنُهُ فِيهِ الرَّحْمَةِ وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ قِبَلِهِ you will see, O oh Prophet, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Prophet sallallahu will be seeing the believers. So he continues and he says that these munafiqun, one munafiqat, the hypocrites, the men amongst them and the uh, women amongst them, they will be calling out. They will be calling out to those who they see. They see light, right? So because the Day of Judgment, we know that the Day of Judgment is going to be dark. It's going to be dark and light will only come to those who had Iman. So what happens is, you have, let's say, you know, you think of this room, and on one end you see a blink, blinking light, and on the other end is complete darkness. So those that are in the complete darkness, they're looking over at the light and they're seeing light. They're seeing light, so they say, oh, we don't have any light. And they're not sure why they don't have any light. But they don't have any light. So they're wondering, what is, what is that light? So they call out. They will call out to those people that believe, people that had Iman, people whose light is illuminating from their chest and from their right hand. And they will ask them, Please give us some of your light. Please give us some of your light. We see that you have this light that we don't have. And the people with the light, they're just running. Because at this point, you're trying to get across a certain uh, point, right? You're trying to get across the Salat, and some people on that day will have light that is lighting up the city, as I said. But some people, their light will be, you know, it will be dim. But they will still have light. So there are some people who will have Iman in this world, but their Iman and their actions, were, they were not up to par. They were not all the way up there. So even though they have light, the light is not illuminating and it's not lighting up the entire city. Some of their lights, just like, it's barely enough for them to see right in front of them. So these people are running. And some of their lights is being dim and then it's uh, uh, lighting up. And it's dimming and it's lighting up. 
So they're trying to get across the salat. So they're not thinking about what's going on behind them. Even though the munafiq is calling out to them, give me some of your light, please. And then a voice says to them, it's, it is said to them, go back and get your own light. Go back and get your own life. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sarcasm in the Quran. He puts it in there. Because when he says, go back and get your life, or when it's said to them, go back and get your life, it is basically telling them, oh, you had a chance in the hayat dunya to perfect your life, to get life. And they, both sides know that there is no going back to the world of the dunya. This is it, khalas. There is no going back. But it is said to them, no, go back and get your own life. And this brings more despair to the heart. It brings a realization to the heart that this is it. I'm doomed. There is no going back. This, I had my chance. I lived a certain number of years. I had my chance to do good. I had my chance to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I did not. I died. And this is where I'm at, I'm at right now. So it is said to them, Irjuhu And then when this is said to them, Faltamisu Nura, Faguri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now erects a big wall in, in front of the two sides. Faguri This big old wall now just drops down in front of them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that inside of this wall, inside of this wall, is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. Jannah. And outside of this wall, now is the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى. So the ayah ends. فضرب بينهم بسور له باب باطنه فيه الرحمة وظاهره من قبله العذاب. That this wall that got erected between these two groups of people now, inside of it, al Jannah and outside of it, al Nar Jahannam. The very next ayah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, ينادونه. Now that this wall is erected. The, the hypocrites, those who are on the other side, they're still trying. They have not given up yet. So they, they call out, they call out to those who are in Jannah. And my dear brothers and sisters, this is the entire point of the khutbah. So listen very carefully to this specific ayah. Were we not with you all. The hypocrites say to the believers, Alam nakum were we not with you all, i.e., are we not your brothers and sisters? Are we not your colleagues? Are we not your roommates? Are we not your husbands and wives? The believers, they said, of course, yes, you were with us. In Hayat al you were with us. We were all together. We used to pray together. We used to go to MSA events together. We used to go to the masjid together. We used to have Eid together. We used to do bazaars together. We used to go to conferences together. We did all of these. We played together. We did all of these things together. We shopped together. We were close. Qalu bala, of course. Wala kinnakum fatantum anfusakum. And this is the first thing, my dear brothers and sisters. This is advice for us who want Iman in our hearts and want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness on the day of judgment. This is the advice for us. This is something that we have to listen to very carefully. 
قالوا بلا ولكنكم فتنتم أنفسكم. What was the first thing? What is the first thing that the believers say to the munafiq? Those who outwardly did the deeds, right? But in their hearts, the light kept going off and on, kept going off and on in this world. ولكنكم فتنتم أنفسكم. Number one, you were with us, but what happened? You kept putting yourself in situations where your iman would be tested. You kept putting yourself in situations where your iman would be tested. And we all know what this means. We all have those friends. We all have this certain habit. We all have this thing or that thing where we know for a fact that we should probably stay away from those friends because every time we hang out with them, it's nothing but good. Either the entire conversation is about gossip, gossiping about other people, cursing something, doing this, doing that, um, certain acts you're not supposed to do, going to this place you're not supposed to go to, etc., etc. We have those friends, right? So instead of saying, you know what, maybe I should stop you and I with those friends. We say, oh, no, it's okay. I won't fall into it. It's okay. I'm, I'm strong enough. I'm just trying to help them out. Right? Instead of actually helping them out, we just keep going to where they are. Right? You kept going to places you know that you were not supposed to go to, thinking that you were strong enough to be in those places and not any harm come to you. Meaning, you kept putting yourself in the fire and expecting that you were, you had enough shield that you weren't going to get burned. That's the first thing. I cannot elaborate too much on this because we're going to run out of time. But that's the first thing. And we all know what that means. And after you put yourself in that situation or those situations, you kept procrastinating. Meaning, you kept saying, oh, it's fine. I'll, I'll do better tomorrow, maybe next week. I'll stop doing this. You know, oh man, when I go to Hajj, inshallah, after I come back, you'll see. You know, I'm going to be a perfect Muslim. Oh, dude, Ramadan is right across the corner. That's the forgiveness for everyone, right? Like, I'm cool. I, Ramadan, I'll be focused. I'll do, you know, 30 day boot, boot camp and I'll be good to go for the next 11 months. Right? We kept doing this. We kept putting ourselves in a situation and making excuses, procrastinating. The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, procrastinating. Stopping those things that we know we weren't supposed to do. We kept procrastinating it, saying, oh no, it's fine. What about Bustu? Number two, we kept procrastinating. Number, th number three, what a tabito. And then Shaitan came to us and said, man, dude, you're not, it's, what's so bad about this? You know, you're just living your, your, your life, man. You know, like, what, what's the big deal? Right? You're just trying to be your best self. You're just, you're just trying to find yourself. And this is your you being authentic to who you are. So therefore, it's fine, man. It's not a big deal. God is love, man. It's okay. I can do it, right? You, you deluded yourself, and she not trapped you in that delusion. Shaitan has millions of years of, 
millions of years of practice. We, we, we don't, you know, we cannot outsmart shape on. We cannot outsmart shape on. That's why we say, We seek refuge with Allah from the shape of because alone we cannot do it. So now you start doubting the matter. You start doubting the matter, and you say, you know what, actually, even if Allah, you know, if it's true, it's okay, Allah is the most merciful, right? So He'll forgive me. Had that. You kept perpetually living in this cycle your entire life. In and out. One foot in, one foot out. Perpetually living in this cycle, and what happened? Hatta ja'a amrullah. I eat until you die. You lived your life like this until you passed away. Which brings us to the beginning of the khutbah where we see people with lights and then we see people with no lights. Right? This is what you did. This is why you are in the situation that you're in. And this is the, I mean, if you can think of someone dying because of sorrow, you're so sad and you're so, like, you, you, you could just die at that point. If you could just imagine that, this is the, 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 the munafiq on that day. This is the state of the munafiq on that day. After hearing these, one by one, as soon as the believer said, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ In their head they said, check, you're right. What are you Check, you're right. What are you You're right. You're right. I did all of these things. I have no, I have no defense. Because on the day of judgment, there is no lie. Right? I have no defense. I did all of this. So now, you did this, so you have to take your punishment. And my dear brothers and sisters, the scary part about this entire conversation between the munafiq and the believers is the fact that the believers of the munafiqs, they, they, they know each other, you know, because if the munafiq is calling, hey, man, hey, friend, hey, so-and-so, such-and-such, I know you. We're bros, or we're girls. We were together in this world. So we have to be very careful. We have to take, we have to heed this advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, it's profound. And every time I read this surah, surah hadith, and I go over this, I sit down and I try to make a checklist. Am I, what am I lacking in, lacking in in this list right here? And if we sit down and do that, every time we go over the surah, inshallah, we will be in good shape on the day of judgment. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on the day of judgment, we're on the side of the believers who have the life coming from their chest and their right hand, and not on the side of the munafiq who have complete and utter darkness, where it will be told to them that they put themselves in this situation. I mean, Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وأبنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيموا الصلاة